if opening her up helps. Here in my garage, here in my garage in the Rancho Cordova Hills, I'm going to show you the saw I just put together. It's a Home Light 350. Picked it up in January. Uh, basically did everything to it. And the video we're going to do today is we're going to try to get this thing tuned up and try to get a couple cuts in it. I don't really have big old logs, but. I'll show off some stuff right now. It's nighttime, can't even tune it yet. I'll tune in the morning, but I'm gonna show you some stuff and then we'll get to it. So here she is. I just finished this up maybe about a week ago. The Home Light 350. Um, when I got it, I'll make sure to throw up some pictures, but it was, how you would imagine, an old saw that nobody cares about, kind of left alone. Um, See, I got all the decals. It has a 24 inch bar on it with a nice home light decal kind of spray painted in there. Um, I think it came out really good. I'm just some dude who did a <laughs> just sprayed it with a spray can, but I had this whole thing torn apart and put all the new seals, new hoses, and everything. Fresh coats of paint, clear coat, and stuff like that. One of the big things I got was this new old stock grip for it, which is pretty, um, pretty nice because these are always tore up. Um, I flip it over on this other side. So everything's just nice and cleaned up with the, it's a little more orange than the normal home light, but it was either that or really dark red. And I didn't want to do dark red. I have a 330 I did that's really deep red and I kind of want to get away from that. Most of the, uh, <laughs> all the old home lights you find anyways, they all look orange just because they're so faded. So it kind of looks cool. It kind of looks like one you'd find, but um, some of the things that came out real nice, the decal up here, I got the nice choke lever thing here, came out real nice. All these decals here came out really good. And again, everything's clear coated, so it should hold up. Um, but what I'm telling you about like the choppy paint job is that you can see here, a lot of the stuff didn't come off from underneath and I just painted over it. The intention of this saw was to use it. So it's all gonna come off anyways once you start going. I see here, some paint came off here. Um, bits and pieces, just a lot of bumps and everything. Um, we have that, then in here, where the air filter is, I kind of ran into a problem with this hose. So right here, this hose is supposed to go from the, uh, the cylinder, has a little vacuum tube, and this tube here is supposed to go onto the carburetor. Obviously, you guys know, um, it's just a little pulse for the fuel pump. I put too big of a diameter, uh, inner diameter hose in there. As soon as you put it on, the thing collapses on itself. So I have this beautiful rig set up. So it goes from there through here because you have just nothing but space. It's like just a carb and then space. Every other chainsaw you see is I mean, just chock full of crap. This thing is actually kind of nice. But you do have to keep in mind when you hit the throttle, it touches the hose, and when you hit the choke, it touches the hose. So you need some flexibility there without it collapsing. So right now, 
this will be addressed when I take it apart for cleaning. But that is one thing. Um, there's a bolt down here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Turn it over for you. Right there. That actually goes into a um, bushing for the vibration control. Um, I had to buy a new one because the old one broke and I have all new bushings and everything. Old one broke, so I bought a new one, but the thread on that was bigger than the rest. Because here's one here, they have one there on the other side. Thread was too big, so I had to tap that out and I had some resistance going in, but when I maxed it out, it started spinning a little bit. It felt tight, so I just, in a panic, stopped touching it. <laughs> That's all good mechanics do. But um, when I go to take it all apart, that is something I will take a look at if I need to address that. Hopefully, um, it's just a bunch of stuff in it that can probably be cleaned up and it should be good, but that's one thing. So we have the two things, and then um, on these caps here, they have these duck bill valves. You're supposed to take these little things out right here. It's like a piece of cork, and then you replace the valve, and they are just petrified in there. So I have the the valves coming. So when those come, um, should stop any leaks. Um, but other than that, everything went together sweet on this saw. Oh, another thing. When I did the bar, <laughs> I painted it white first. Looked good. And then I put this stencil, the home light stencil on there. And obviously when I took it off, a bunch of paint came off. Again, total rookie wannabe painter. I know that. I know that. What I did in my brilliancy was try to make it look like mountains. Turns out I am not an artist, but I did think the idea was pretty cool. Um, again, not too worried. It's gonna come off instantly <laughs> as soon as I try to uh, try to cut through something. So wasn't the biggest concern of mine because I don't really want to do show saws. I want to do working saws, but just tighten this here so that tightens into position. But that's really about it. This is the chain it came with. Killer shape, 24 inch bar. Decals look good. Very excited. It's one of the one of the the most in-depth um, rebuilds I've done. So hopefully this is kind of the start of something. That's why I'm kind of starting this channel. It's just to kind of show you some of the like my newbie stuff getting going on it. Um, I do have a lot of experience and kind of wrenching and, you know, a lot of two stroke, you know, obviously you start with your lawn mowers and blowers and weed eaters. And then I really started getting into chainsaws. And then I started getting to the old home light chainsaws. And I have a 330. I'm going to be tuning alongside of this just because I did a whole rebuild on that. Um, that's with a 20 inch bar, but, um, probably tomorrow. I'm definitely going to get a tune on this. I will say I did cheat <laughs> a little bit, but I did pour some gas down the carburetor earlier today. Thing fired right up. Sounds sweet. So what we're going to do tomorrow, obviously, is fill the tank, um, fill the oil reservoir, and just fire up, see how she sounds. Um, I'm thinking it should be good, but... Uh, you guys will see along with me. I also have some small pieces of wood to cut. Um, so we'll try to get some uh, run time on it, see where she's at. I obviously will have another video probably on sharpening the chain and fixing whatever, you know, breaks during all that because there's always something that breaks. But I'll have like a little Home Light 350 series and then I have some other stuff I want to start wrenching on and now that I have some time to do it. So. We'll see how it goes. Now we gotta get the gas and the oil in. It's cause, oh yeah, all the way at the top. That'll give us an idea if it leaks or not. I 
think I'm going to keep this stuff in because I still need to do the valves on these. Alright, gonna get some gas in here. There she's sitting. That should be pretty good. And then what I'm gonna do. Alright, move this over to the side, eh? I'm gonna take this off. That way we can see what's going in there. It's over in the garage. All right, so we're back. <laughs> I hella pussed out. Um, it wasn't starting, so I did what every good YouTuber does, and I turned off the camera. I actually got it to kind of go a little bit, but I ran into, I think, not just the problem, but it was a really big problem. This thing right here. This thing comes out, but this one doesn't. Yeah, I'll show you here. This is a transformer, and you bolt it in to right here. But what I was finding, right in here is the plastic piece that goes behind that, and it is cracked. So when this thing was running, that's why this one is coming out. Looks like it was over torqued at one point, but um, what was happening is it was, when it was running, this kind of twisted to the side as it was unloosening and not making a good connection. So I don't know if that was truly the whole problem because it probably was connecting there, but it wasn't making good connection to that because it was running and then it turned off. Um, the main one was flooding. This bad boy was flooded, which was interesting because I only had it turned uh, one turn out on both sides. So let me show you real fast. So right here, I had it turned to one turn. So let's let's do this. See if I can do it one-handed here. So I'm going to bring that in, and I'm going to bring this one in. So as you can see, they're kind of sideways now that's all the way in i had them turn just one turn i'm gonna do half a turn for next time we do it but half a little bit more half so right now i'm just gonna go at half a turn but that thing was legit flooded and i only had it at one turn when i tested it so I was backing it off. I got it to run a little bit until that transformer came off, but um, 
that was still pretty flooded. So um, good to know. It's gonna be a real fine tuner um, when we're doing it. But um, I had it, it kind of opened up on me. It sounded really good until that transformer kind of came off in the back. What we need to do, there's a couple things we need to address anyways. We have a hose in here for the vacuum line for the carburetor. Um, diameter's too big so it folds on itself. We're gonna swap that out. I need to take this whole piece off. There's a bolt down here. We need to see um, how it's threading in. It was kind of installed weirdly. And then obviously we need to take out this little connector here. It's like tabs that hold it in. What we need to do is take this whole back plate off, um, take this out, and then this is cracked here. We're gonna have to figure out a way to get it together. We're gonna have to glue it up or something, or I have like some really strong, um, it's like the E6000 glue. It's supposed to be, um, I've, I've used it for a lot of stuff and it is awesome. What I plan on doing is figuring out a way to get it in here so we get some pressure on it, get some glue all up in it, get the bolt in just to kind of keep the threads there and let it dry overnight. And I think that should probably get us, cause it's like, like legit, it's like one pound of, you know, of torque you got to get on that thing just to hold it in place. But since it's cracked, you can't get any, you know, tension on it cause it just keeps spinning. So, um, so we're going to try to address that. Oh, also something I did not on camera is I got the new duct valves in there. So, I mean, it wasn't bad or anything, but it was leaking a little bit of oil and gas out of those holes. Now it doesn't. So we can finally start juggling this thing, I guess. But, um, but yeah, so it's getting late tonight um, because of, I did some stuff off camera, obviously, pushing out as things weren't working. But um, now we're back. What I plan on doing um, here in the next day or two, I'll have you guys with me. We are going to open her up and we're going to see about fixing that little connector for the transformer there. Um, and then see about firing her up. I also got this little cover that came in the mail today. So it's a Husqvarna, but the color is legit. That looks pretty good. So I also um, tuned up that 330. I'll probably do another video on that one. That was one of the first ones I um, I kind of restored. It's like kind of a crappy paint job and um, everything. And I did it kind of like a half-assed restore. Cool. But then I, I recently, like maybe two weeks ago, I tore the whole thing down and resealed it. Got, you know, crank seals, all brand new hoses and everything. Um, so that thing runs sweet. What I'll do is... Uh, I'll do another video where I'm kind of talking about it and then I'll show that tune up I did because that thing tuned up real nice. Uh, that thing's ready to go, um, which was nice because I, I had a lot of problems with that thing like I'm running into with this. It's just old, you know, just old crap kind of showing its age. So you just have to, you know, you just have to run it and see what breaks and then just fix it as you're going along. Luckily, nothing super serious the compression was awesome it was flooding so um which i was able to kind of lean it out i just couldn't get a good mix on it with that kind of coming off at the end the transformer but i really think somewhere around that half turn we're going to be at least getting her going um so i mean you just got to fire it up to figure it out so uh it's getting close uh, there was if you can see here, there's like a little, uh, I can't really get a good look, but there's like a little oil line in there. Let's see if I can flashlight real fast. There's a little oil line right in there. Uh, maybe you guys should see, eh? Right there. And that thing has oil in it, so it's pumping. So that's good. So it's getting oil, because um, the way it works, you just have a gear on the crankshaft coming out here and it turns the oiler mechanism. There's like a whole adjuster and everything. You have this up here, right there. You can adjust that for more or less. 
Um, I, didn't, I couldn't find the decal for that, so what I'll probably do is when I get my name on this thing, I'm going to put a little plus and minus. Um, say which way to go when you want to add or you know, have less when you're bucking or, or not. But so that's good. Everything was working on it. Just uh, carb was way rich. Um, fouled the plug super fast. And then that transformer disconnecting just made it, you know, total bitch to try to, um, to run, which is fine. We just got to fix that, which is what's nice is it doesn't need much torque. So if I just get some glue, I have that really strong E6000 glue, kind of get that kind of pressed, um, you know, let it dry overnight. And I, I think we'll be, you know, good to go. If that doesn't work, then we're gonna have to, you know, figure out a better solution. But I think that should be good for us. I mean, everything else seemed really sweet. We'll get that hose swapped out because that's just bugging me. But it worked, so so the concept's there, so that's good. That's, you know, that makes it worth moving forward instead of, you know, trying to figure out something else. But no, um, other than me hella pussing out on the tune-up and turning you guys off, like, uh, pretty stoked. So next is doing some wrenching on this thing. All right, put this in, if you can see here. See that crack? So I need to get the glue into there. Um, I think if I can get the glue in there, cause that's a pretty big crack. Um, and I clamp it just with a little bit of force, that should be enough to hold it. 